Just two years ago, this landscape here used to look like that barren landscape over there. So how do you change a severely eroded and dangerous landscape to a landscape that looks like this, that's completely lush and green? Welcome to the first episode in our Bolivia series. Bolivia is the home of some of history's most advanced ancient civilizations and one of the last places on earth where people still live like their ancient ancestors, practicing traditions and cultures millennia old. Known for its extreme landscapes and diverse climates, with some of the most dangerous roads in the world. However, it's also one of the poorest places on earth due to years of economic and political crises. Which is why we're here, because across the country, from remote mountain villages to vibrant urban barrios, communities are tapping into the advanced knowledge and engineering genius of Bolivia's ancient civilizations to turn the tide against extreme poverty and environmental degradation. So join us on this once-in-a-lifetime journey to discover if the wisdom of Bolivia's past can be the key to a better future. I've come all the way to Bolivia to see how ancient technology is being used to do something spectacular. In one of the poorest countries in the world, where modern solutions have failed, if not made things worse, Bolivia is experiencing a profound resurgence of its ancient culture and traditions. I've come on a breathtaking journey high up in the Andes Mountains to see an incredible wetland restoration project that's changing the lives of thousands of people. How do you bring flowing water back to rivers and springs that have totally dried up? In this episode, we'll be seeing how ancient Inca techniques are being used in the Bolivian Andes to restore entire watersheds, reforest mountain ranges with native trees, and bring back flowing water to rivers and springs. And how can this protect some of Bolivia's most perilous and dangerous roads from frequent blockages by landslides and falling rocks? I'll be traveling on some of the country's most dangerous roads to find out. Bolivia relies heavily on glacier melt from the Andes for its water supply, especially for major cities like La Paz. However, in recent years these glaciers have been rapidly shrinking, and combined with widespread pollution and inadequate infrastructure, it's led to severe and persistent water scarcity across the nation. I'm on my way to see a life-changing watershed restoration project high up in the Andes Mountains. However, our journey was abruptly halted because the road ahead had completely collapsed into the river. Just a few weeks ago, this was a functioning road, but after the rainy season, it's disappeared. This is fairly common in South America, where extreme climate and extreme geography create situations like these. But living with these extremes was a defining aspect of Bolivia's ancient cultures. Bolivia was home to some of South America's earliest and most complex ancient civilizations, who surprisingly thrived in one of the most extreme and volatile terrains in the world, the Andes Mountains. The Andes region naturally experiences some of the worst problems that are escalating around the world today, from devastating landslides and erosion to severe and unpredictable flooding, prolonged droughts, and food security issues. However, over millennia, the people of this region developed a complete system of sophisticated strategies for all of the same problems we face today that were so successful, they supported a succession of some of the most advanced civilizations in history. And coming up, we're gonna see how they're being brought back to reverse some of the world's biggest problems. We were about to experience just how extreme some of those problems can be for ourselves. Because as we ascended up to the restoration project, we were shocked to find the remnants of a recent landslide and massive fallen boulders on the side of the road. This is one of the most dangerous roads in Bolivia. Here, landslides happen regularly. Every day, local people risk their lives from falling boulders like these. So here you can see the recent landslide that isolated this community. The homes here don't have any shops nearby. The closest place is the city, which is about an hour away. And that meant for 10 days, they could not leave their community. 
But now we were about to find out how ancient engineering is turning all this around. So how do you change a severely eroded and dangerous landscape that looks like that on the mountainside to a landscape that looks like this that's lush and green? The landscape in the distance is being gradually washed away by severe rain events. But it's not just water that's been the problem, it's also because it's been too dry. And it's not just here, this is happening all over the country. Bolivia has experienced two of the worst droughts ever recorded in 2016 and 2023. Long dry periods kill off ground cover like grasses and shrubs that would normally protect and hold the soil in place. Then the absence of moisture destroys the life in the soil, turning it hard and crusty and finally hydrophobic, which means it can't absorb water at all and when it rains, it just runs off. The country has become trapped in this vicious cycle because the rain that was once a blessing has become more extreme year on year, causing devastating flooding and landslides. However, on this side of the mountain, it's completely the opposite. The land is full of lush vegetation. Why is it so green here and the landscape is far more stable? It's because they've been transforming this entire mountain over the last 10 years from the top down by reviving a range of simple and affordable techniques based on traditional local wisdom. The ancient people of the Andes developed a revolutionary vertical land management system to protect the landscape which they are recreating here. In fact, this ancient system of protecting the landscape and its abundant water source was a fundamental responsibility and considered sacred duties that were part of a reciprocal exchange system between Bolivia's ancient people and the land. So how did they do it? By controlling the flow of water, by creating terraces, channels and ponds. However, these are only elements of the ancient vertical land management system they are recreating here, because it actually starts with a new project at the very top of the mountain that's brought back water to the whole watershed. So we have come to see it for ourselves in an area called San Francisco. Just a few years ago, the land here was extremely dry and had very little vegetation. But now, thanks to applying ancient landscape engineering, an entire wetland has come back to life. Just a few years ago, all of this was completely dry and incredibly, now it's a restored wetland where more and more water is infiltrating into the mountain year after year. And that these rivers and streams lower down that is used to irrigate farms. We'll explain the techniques they used here and further down the mountain later in the show, but first let's see how effective it's been. Here we can see a flowing river and it's coming from a spring just up on the rock here. It's all because of the wetland restoration up on the mountain. This river is feeding 15 families for their homes and agricultural fields. And this is just one of the springs from this wetland restoration. There are many more. This just shows how effective the wetland restoration is. And what's even more incredible is that this water is actually flowing all year round and it's much more than it was before. And at the bottom of the mountain, over 70 families are irrigating their farms with the water that's infiltrated in the San Francisco wetland back at the top of the mountain, which they store in a huge reservoir above their village, just like the Incas did. And just like the Incas, it's not the only one. Thanks to this extra abundance of water, they are able to fill artificial reservoirs from the rivers and springs on the mountain, which were another key technology of the ancient Andean land management system. A very effective ancient technique to improve the water supply is by creating reservoirs, and thanks to the increase of water here, they can play very important roles. Here we have a reservoir that's capturing water from the restored watershed up on the mountain. Water is being brought from springs through pipes like these. It then goes into a filtration tank to get rid of the sediment, and then the rest of the water overflows into this reservoir here. Then over here, there's actually a backup tank that stores just as much water as this reservoir. This pipe is taking the overflow of water through this channel, leading into a series of ponds. I went to see how the reservoirs are being made. The project is being led by Herman, who has made reservoirs all over Bolivia. We are building a circular reservoir. It is for storing 46,000 liters of water. 
These reservoirs mostly use a small amount of natural materials, which are sourced from the land close to the construction site. Here we have mainly used adobe bricks to make the inner mold of the reservoir. But for the outside, we have also used quite a bit of stone, which is abundant in the Andean region. These reservoirs have a huge impact by providing water during the dry season and droughts, while being fast and inexpensive to make. It took us three and a half days more or less to build. I'm here with Theodoro, and he's one of the community who's receiving water from San Francisco. And this is his reservoir. So this water here is coming straight from the top of the mountain where we were earlier. Para que montamos más agua, para cultivo, para regar papa, cebolla, haba, todo hortaliza produce aquí. Now Theodoro has this reservoir, he's able to irrigate his crops such as corn, potatoes and onions. One of the leaders of this project is Herman. He is part of an organization which installs and teaches communities how to make and use ancient engineering techniques themselves, and as well as producing leaflets and manuals that explain how to apply these methods. Just like the ancient people of the Andes, Herman has created a 3D model of the mountain's landscape that shows the rivers and streams as well as the villages to understand the watershed and plan hydraulic systems. It's thought that pre-Columbian Andean cultures demonstrated an advanced understanding of landscape engineering by creating detailed planning models. The Say White Stone in Peru with representations of canals, dams, and waterfalls, some researchers believe was a planning model for a hydraulic system. And Samaipata in Bolivia features massive carved stones that are believed to be three-dimensional representations of the local terrain. These master models were intricately sculpted so the ancient Andean engineers could visualize all the elements of their vertical land management system on the entire landscape, allowing them to effectively manage water and transform the challenging mountain environment to support their communities. Master models is something we will see again in our next series on Peru, where six communities are preserving ancient varieties of potatoes. So make sure you're subscribed for that. So let's find out how exactly the ancient techniques they are using here actually work, starting with terraces. Terraces are created by gathering rocks from the landscape, creating a wall on the contour line on the side of the slope. By doing this, it slows the flow of water down the mountain and prevents erosion. So the terraces are to prevent soil erosion and to maintain fertility. Unlike the clean reconstructed terraces you might have seen at archaeological sites, it was actually common to plant trees along the walls of the terraces, which were a combination of fruit trees and forest trees. The fruit trees and the forest trees should always be on top of or behind the stone wall. Why? Because it's the place where the most soil accumulates. There's greater depth greater fertility, and also greater moisture retention. And here they've used a series of terraces that cascade down the mountain, and the water that it captures allows for all of this vegetation to grow. On top of that, they've created several artificial ponds that capture and hold rainwater that slowly infiltrates into the ground. And this principle was also used at a larger scale to kickstart the whole watershed because the ancient people of Bolivia would make artificial ponds and lakes that were part of wetland areas to capture and infiltrate rainwater at the very top of the mountain where the whole watershed and water cycle starts. And that's exactly what they have done here. Here they've built ponds to capture water in the rainy season. By creating these ponds, they're able to restore this wetland area which acts like a sponge, absorbing more water that's infiltrated into the mountain and that feeds rivers and streams lower down, used to irrigate farms. Together with over 30 channels, you can see dug out around the ponds. The amount of water in the streams lower down the mountain has increased by over 25%. It's incredible to see that just in a few years, wetlands like these can make a huge difference.
The method used to create these ponds is to dig them out and then create a barrier with the rocks so the water doesn't all drain away. This way, all the water that you can see here is infiltrated slowly into the mountain, recharging the aquifers. Thousands of native trees have been planted here as part of this overall project. What's so impressive about the restoration of this wetland is that it has been achieved with the collaboration of multiple communities further down the mountain. These communities are now seeing more water in the springs, rivers and streams that they can use to irrigate their farms. The agreement between the communities was not to graze on this land or farm it in order to restore the wetland and for native trees to grow back. Less than an hour's drive from here, they have installed an even bigger reservoir which is supporting an entire community and a massive reforestation project. Behind me is a large reforestation site of native Andean trees. It's been protected since the 2000s so that the forest can grow back. This reservoir holds 500,000 litres of water and it was built by the local community. The water here supplies 80 agroforestry plots for 100 families on the hillside below us. And it's all part of a huge 70 hectare project to restore the ecosystem in this entire valley. Using ancient engineering methods from the top to the bottom of the entire watershed, this is a long-term project that's managed by the local community to reforest a huge area of land and support families and farmers. If you want to see more of this, we'll be covering this project in the final episode of the series. In the next episode, we'll be visiting one of Bolivia's poorest barrios. Situated next to the city trash dump, it doesn't have a water supply or access to fresh food, and there's no police. We'll be seeing how they're greening the desert by using a millennia-old formula to turn compacted ground into highly fertile soil, a formula modern science has only been aware of for 20 years. And we'll also be visiting women using ingenious techniques to get water here and seeing some very important community projects. So be sure to subscribe for that, and if you enjoyed this video, give it a like down below Thanks for watching.